Okay. So um, we're talking about connected tissue now. We just quickly covered epithelial tissue, one type of tissue. Here's our next type, connective tissue. Shown here is a slide of uh, skin. Uh, once again, what type of epithelium do you see here? Stratified squamous. Be more specific. Yes. Keratinized stratified squamous. This is keratinized stratified squamous. We can tell it's epithelium because it's very dense, it's very purple, the nuclei are all clustered together. If you look deep to it, though, these are also nuclei, right? Nice roundish stained things. So these are cells. This is connective tissue. But what's very different about connective tissue compared to epithelial tissue? The nuclei are very sparse. So the question is then, what's all this stuff in between? Are they cells? Well, it's right. No, they're not cells. It's other stuff. Connective tissue in between that stuff is called an extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix. I want you to be able to spell that out. It's it's a matrix. It's a network of stuff outside of cells. Extracellular matrix. Which slide? Slide thirty one. So what is this stuff? It just depends. It's definitely going to be some ground substance. That's just a fancy word for the fluid composition. That's called ground substance. And often a lot of different types of proteins, different protein fibers. You've probably heard of one at least, a like collagen. Collagen is a common one. So this is not within cells. This is outside cells. It's extracellular. Sometimes the extracellular matrix can be fluid, like blood. Plasma is the extracellular matrix of blood. Sometimes it can be solid, like bone. Bone, that's extracellular matrix. Or it can be something in between. Like what you just saw on skin, it's not quite, it's somewhat liquidy, but it's also solid. It's a mixture of stuff. So it can range. It can be very liquidy, it can be somewhere in between, it can be somewhere, something very solid. It just depends. All these things are classified as connected to does interstitial fluid count as one of these things? Um, brown substance would be a type of interstitial fluid. It's in between cells, it would be interstitial, yeah. So that's one major characteristic of connective tissue, is that it has an extracellular matrix. Another important feature is that it has vascularity, it has blood vessels, and a nerve supply. Epithelial tissue did have a nerve, nerve endings, but this has more extensive nerve supply and blood. So that's what I mean by vascularity. So this uh, this image here, illustration and actual micro micrograph. You can see nuclei of cells. They're far away from each other, and then you can see some protein fibers, and then just empty space. The empty fluid. Um, that's one example of what connective tissue would look like. So what do we need connective tissue for? Because of the broad diversity, because of the broad diversity of uh, what the extracellular matrix can be, there's a broad, uh, many different functions that they can do. They can provide a framework, so bone and cartilage count as connective tissue, so that they make for our skeleton, they, make up our, they protect our brain, they protect our spinal cord, they protect our heart and lungs, they protect our internal genitalia. So shown here are bone cells, called osteocytes, and surrounding it is stuff like calcium and other stuff we'll get to later. 
They can be important for transporting things, whether it's fluids or nutrients or wastes. So blood, and we'll get to what lymph is later, blood and lymph help transport fluids and nutrients and wastes around our body. You've, some of you have seen blood cells. These are all red blood cells. Here are white blood cells. And you've got all this plasma in between. Um, white blood cells, leukocytes. That's what white blood cells are. White blood cells are called leukocytes. They help protect us from pathogens, outside harmful things, as well as they protect us from our cells also. <coughs> So they can be a framework, they can protect, they can transfer things, they can defend us, they can just generally support and connect things. Fascia, this is what covers up muscles. So the outer protective covering of muscles and also some organs, that's what fascia is. Tendons, what do they connect? Anyone know? Muscle to bone. Tendons are muscle to bone. Ligaments are bone to bone. So all these things are just more connecting, more, more ways to connect. Shown here, this is muscle. This is a tendon. So this would connect to a bone somewhere. Can you see what fascia is again? Fascia, what is fascia? It's a, think of it like it's an encasing membrane that, that either covers and protects muscle or other organs. Um, it can be for storage or for blood cell formation. So fat adipose, is really important for a cushion, for storing energy. We can use our fat as an energy source. In some of our bones, and we'll get to which ones later on, in some of our bones, we have red bone marrow. And red bone marrow is essential because this is what helps produce all of your blood cells. Red blood cells, white blood cells, like this. Shown here is um, adipose. Adipose is very, very big and full because it's stored fat. So the nuclei of these cells, they're all pushed to the side. All of this is fat storage, and then all the organelles are in just this one small part of the cell. It's all pushed to the side. Any questions on these five basic functions? Five fish. There are three types, sorry it's a little dark because I'm not realizing, there are three types of categories, I don't, I, there's a million categories. There are three categories of connective tissue. There's connective tissue proper. What that means is it's stuff that you traditionally think of as connective. We'll talk about this in more detail in a second. There are fluid connective tissues where the extracellular, extracellular matrix is a fluid, things like blood and lymph. We'll talk about this later. So I just want you to know they exist. We'll talk about this in more depth later. And then there's supporting connective tissues, things like bone and cartilage. We'll also talk about this later. Right now we're gonna focus on connective tissue proper. And connective tissue proper can be divided into two categories. You have loose connective tissue proper, and you have dense connective tissue proper. Loose is called loose because when you look at the, it's all about the extracellular matrix. When you look at the extracellular matrix, can you see gaps between the protein fibers? That means it's loose. If it's dense, you won't see gaps. So shown here is loose. I'll give you an example of dense coming up. There are three types of tissue that fit under loose. There are three types of tissue that fit under dense. Let's go over those six now. Before we can talk about all these different, these three different types, what, give, what gives rise to all connective tissue is a tissue called mesenchyme. Mesenchyme is a term for embryonic connective tissue. What germ layer did this come from? The mesoderm. So the mesoderm, go back even further, the mesoderm gives rise to 
It can give rise to muscle, it can give rise to mesenchyme. Mesenchyme is the precursor to all connective tissues, whether it's connective tissue proper or supporting or fluid. You will need to recognize this under the microscope. The way this looks, um, the nuclei of these cells are all spread apart. They almost look like neurons, but they're not as big as neurons. Neurons have big cell bodies. These cell bodies are normal size. They have this kind of branching network of stuff. Those are the protein fibers that are branching. It's not part of the cell of the protein fibers. The so mesenchyme, the sea of collagen and cells, this is what leads to all the different types. Okay, let's go over connective tissue proper. Our first type that we're going over is adipose. Adipose is just your fancy way of saying fat. These cells store fat. They are very blob like because all of this. Most of this area is meant to store fat. It's meant for fat storage. The nucleus is pushed off to the side. If I could draw a rough sketch of what it looks like. Here's the plasma membrane. Here's the nucleus and all the other organelles. And then all of this is fat storage. So Everything's been pushed to the side. The main goal of fat is to store fat. The adipose is to store fat. The term for these cells is an adipocyte. Site and cell, it's an adipose cell. Adipocyte. You usually find them just underneath, in, in the deeper layers of your skin. It's typically where you find it. There are other areas, we'll get to it later. That's a major place where you find it, deep, deep areas of your skin. Question. The hypodermis? Yeah, it's found in the hypodermis, which is the deepest part of your skin. Um, in between cells, which you can't really see, so you just have to trust me for now, in between cells, there is an extracellular matrix of collagen. So in between these cells, there's collagen. Collagen is a protein that is large, it's long, it's straight. It doesn't branch. So represented in this diagram, it would be uh, these larger green ones. We're going to learn about three types of um, three types of uh, protein fibers. Collagen is is the in between one. You can have a really flexible fiber. You can have a very stiff fiber. Collagen is somewhat flexible, but also somewhat stuffy. stuffy and flexible. And you want fat to be cushy by having extracellular matrix and collagen that allows for that function. Questions on adipose? More questions? That's adipose. So next one is called reticular tissue. Reticular tissue. Remember when we were poking around in um, in the fetal pig and feeling the different organs? When you felt the stomach compared to the liver, how do you compare the, the texture of them? The heart. Yes, we'll get to that. One's in the abdominal area. We'll, we'll stick with that. The kidneys. Liver, spleen was a little bit dense. We'll stick with those. Kidney, liver, spleen, they are denser than the others. The reason is because intertwined in them is this connective tissue, reticular tissue. Reticular tissue, um, the way it looks under the microscope, here you can see all these nuclei. So reticular tissue, Primarily has reticular fibers in its extracellular matrix. 
So in the denser of organs, like the liver, the kidney, the spleen, types of proteins, you can see by having thick branches that allows for that stiffness. Blast. A fibroblast is a, think of this as an immature growing cell. <clears throat> a fibroblast is the one producing the fibers. Fibroblasts build. Fibroblasts, they build. How did these fibers get out here? They had to be produced by something. Cells produce protein, right? From ribosomes and rough yard so on. How do, how do they release the protein to the outside? With vesicles by the process of exocytosis. So these cells were originally fibroblasts. When, they, when they're creating this tissue, they're releasing these proteins to the outside, to the exocellular matrix. And they're producing, in this case, they're producing reticular fibers. So no matter what kind of fiber it is, you need fibroblasts to build that extracellular matrix. Once it's primarily built, they then mature, these fibroblasts mature into fibrocytes. Fibrocytes maintain, maintain those fibers. You're saying fibroblasts build fibrocytes maintain? Yes, fibroblasts build fibrocytes maintain. We had adipocytes for adipos. For most other connected tissues, we're talking about fibroblasts and fibrocytes. What do we? What do I mean by maintain? Proteins don't last forever, so you'll need to replace them. Just like if a building needs renovations, you just need to add or replace some things. That's what these fibrocytes do. Good question. Our third type of loose fiber is. Um, Areolar. Areolar, I'm already forgetting what areolar means, but areolar tissue, areolar connected tissue, has all fiber types. We've gone over two already. It has collagen, it has reticular fibers. Also has this third type called elastic. And hopefully the name is pretty straightforward to you. Elastic fibers are stretchy and flexible. It has all three. By having all three types, that allows it to do a lot. Think of this as like a jack of all trades, jack of all trades, master of none type thing. It can do everything a little bit well. It's not the best at providing the most intense support. It's not the best at being the most flexible. It's all this in-between cushion. It's like a, your basic standard do everything cushion. You find it deep to your outer layer of skin, the epidermis, so it's, I'll point out later on. Um, it helps support all your tracts. It's found around blood vessels and nerves and joints. It's just a basic cushion. Um, the difference between these three types of fibers, collagen was straight, reticular was very branched. Elastic is wavy. Uh, where's a good example? All this wavy texture here, that's elastic fiber. Elastic fibers are wavy. Think of, think of like a coil. The coils are stretchy and springy. The wavy is the wavy elastic fibers are can do that. Yes. How do, I, how do I describe adipose? Surrounding adipose, there's collagen fibers, and collagen is straight. So right now we're talking about the fibers that surround these tissues, these that are in the extracellular matrix. Adipose is a type of connective tissue. Same idea, same idea as I mentioned before. Fiber, fibroblasts build the extracellular matrix. Fibrocytes maintain. Yes. Safe. Oh, uh, collagen is straight. Collagen, uh, its texture is straight. Um, they're large, they're long, and they're straight, and they don't branch. Yeah, elastic, is wavy. elastic is wavy and it can branch. Reticular. reticular is straight and well, just like jagged and branched. Very dark, jagged and branched. 
All this dark stuff is elastic, or reticular fiber, excuse me. All this dark stuff is reticular. Every order has all three. <clears throat> Those are the loose ones. I know adipose doesn't look loose because the cells are pushing up on one another, but it's considered a loose connective tissue. Adipose for cushion and energy storage in particular for providing the framework, areolar for this overall cushion and providing some movement. Three types of dense <coughs> tissues. First one we'll put here is uh, dense regular. That's the name, dense regular. Dense regular looks a lot like smooth muscle, so be careful. This is a lot like what we saw with smooth muscle. The difference is you see the nuclei here of the fibrocytes? All of this, this is collagen. It's slightly weighty, but it's also kind of straight. I wish I could give you a better example, but it's just something you're gonna have to get used to. It looks a lot like smooth muscle, but smooth muscle has a more, has a more tapered look to the sides. Like an individual cell, you can kind of see that weighty, tapered shape. Okay, so it's dense. You can really see there's barely any extracellular matrix that isn't filled in with protein. All of this is collagen. You can see that it's all going in the same direction. Because collagen doesn't branch, you're not going to see any zigzags. All these fibers are going in the same direction. Um, where do you find dense regular? You find them in tendons and ligaments. What do they do again? Tendons and ligaments? Tendon connects muscle to bone, ligaments, bone to bone. When you connect muscle, muscle to bone or bone to bone, it's good for tension in one direction. Ligaments are great for providing support in one direction. Hence, why you see fibers in one direction. Is it a torn ligament? What's torn ligament? I think it should be a piston. <laughs> What do you mean? What ligament did you have? Oh, I tore um, the ligament. Okay, so you pull, and I'm guessing you twisted or. Yeah, yeah you twisted your ankle. I tore my ACL, it's in the, the ligament in your knee, by twisting my knee. Ligaments are not good for twisting motions. They're good for pulling motions, you know, to an extent, but they're not good for twisting. So they're very supportive in one direction, but not in the other direction. So they're great for strength in one direction, but not the other. Which is why ligaments that are very mobile, you've got many ligaments in many different directions. So your ankle has several ligaments, many different ligaments. You're wrapping it, you're being into tiny different ligaments. Um, you need that visual ligament in one direction. Oh, right, collagen. That's regular. That's collagen. There's dense regular, and there's dense irregular. Dense regular had collagen going in the same direction, dense irregular has it going in all crazy directions. So with dense irregular, it's not gonna be as strong in one direction as dense regular, but it will be kind of strong in many directions. So this is great for multi-directional force. You can see collagen going in one direction, some of, so some of it is longitudinal, some of it is cross-section, some of it is on a diagonal. It's going in many different directions. It's a great cushion for, the, for a deep part of our skin, it's called the dermis, we'll get to it later. So uh, one reason why, I mean fat helps, but one reason why your skin can remain so stretchy is because of the collagen in uh, the dense and regular part of it. As you can move it in different directions and it's fine. We'll also find this surrounding our bones and our nerves and muscles. We'll get to that later. Um, it also has elastic fiber. Collagen and elastic. 
I have an elastic fiber that gives it also some flexibility. So say our organs are, need to move around, they allow for that movement. Last type of connective tissue proper is elastic. Um, elastic tissue, as the name suggests, has elastic fibers. Remember there's a difference between the tissue and what fibers it has. So elastic tissue has elastic fibers in the extracellular matrix. The way you identify this, the remember the elastic fibers are very wavy. So look for wavy fibers in a all mostly going in the same direction, but it can branch a little bit too. They tend to be more kinked, more wavy. Where do you find this? You find this in areas that need lots of lots of lots of uh, expansion. So blood vessel walls, the, the largest of your blood vessel walls, like what comes out of your heart, they need to stretch out. Um, uh, and surrounding your vertebrae, which we'll get to later. Again, you have fibroblasts maturing into fibrocytes. Here for cushion and expansion and stabilization. Okay, those are your six types of connective tissue proper. I'd oppose particular areolar, that's regular, that's irregular. Last Let me give you a little bit of practice identifying that. Don't yell it out, don't yell it out loud yet. Try to figure out what it is. This is this is at 40x total. Hopefully you can see the nuclei. Uh, any guesses what this darker straight fiber is? What what fiber is it? Fiber. You have three fibers to choose from. Collagen. It's collagen. So you can see the collagen very clearly. Uh, see a wavy one here? It's elastic. Elastic. <coughs> Let me go to a higher magnification. Here's 100x total. Yeah, this is areolar connective tissue. This is areolar. This one. All right, so here we are at a scanning. Pay attention to this middle region. Um, I'm going to go to higher annotation. Okay. So you can see nuclei spread throughout, and you can see these darker, wavy lines. What fibers are those? Those are elastic, so this is elastic. this is elastic tissue. This is from, taken from an aorta, from a, a blood vessel coming out of your heart. That's elastic. Tissue. This one. Here. Okay, so this is a uh, scanning. Here is 10x objective. How do you describe this extracellular matrix? It's not dense or regular. Sorry? Reticular. This is reticular. Very dark, very branch. So reticular tissue was made of reticular fibers. This will be. I think this is from the. Um, this is from a lymph organ.
Adipose. Yeah, pretty pretty straightforward, right? This is adipose. We'll, we'll be on this practical too, not one. Only that. Yeah, only that. <laughs> but here's the thing. We, remember, oh, so here's here's the adipose, but let me show you something else. Yeah, it all looks like you. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's not. <laughs> We've learned what this is. It might not be a connective tissue, though. Not cuboidal. Here is a nucleus. Here is the cell. Here is a nucleus. Here is the cell. It's not messing time. Here's your hint. It's not connective tissue. <laughs> It's not adipose. It's a holocrine. It's not holocrine, no. And holocrine would be a probably some cuboidal. Yeah. It's not to the shadow fight. It's not transitional. Oh, okay. Where's it start with? Here's the nucleus. Here's the membrane. How many layers are there? One. One layer. How do you describe the shape of the cell? This is simple squamous. This is from the lung. So long tissue. So long tissue looks a lot like adipose. It's got a lot of open spaces, but it's just a different perspective. When you're looking at simple squamous from the lung, look for many nuclei. You can see many nuclei. Compare that to uh, adipose. Compare that to adipose, you've got the nucleus and this is the cell. The nucleus and this is the cell. It's all a bit more spread apart. Yes. From the previous slide, is there more than one layer In the previous slide, if we had more than one layer, if it were more than one layer and they were flat, it would be stratified squares. But it would it just doesn't even look like that. Oh, you're talking about a duct? You're talking about like stratified cuboidal? Right, wait, slide through this. Oh, perfect. So, um, <coughs> so here's a duct. Sorry, that's actually a point, Bessie. That's not the best one. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Uh, you can see that this is a duct. It's really big. There's a lumen of the duct. These are cuboidal cells, and they're stacked on each other. That would be stratified cuboidal. How do I know the one was vessel? Is there a stain inside of it? Um, we'll get to it later. It's, it's simple squamous. So here's simple squamous, and then this is actually smooth muscle surrounding it. Let me show you one more. This is what I showed you for, at, at the beginning of class, of lab. Find it. So here, remind me again, what kind of epithelium is this? Keratinized stratified squamous. <clears throat> I want you to see a, some changes here as we go deeper. This is one type of connective tissue. Like here's the border. Here is another type of connective tissue. And those white. Like this is one type. This is one type from here down. 
This narrower part is another type. Can you tell me what this one here down is? This is dense irregular. You can see how some parts are thick, some parts are small. It's collagen fiber is just interweaving, crisscrossing all over the place. I know it's not very apparent because it looks very different from the slide I showed you previously, but this is areolar. This is areolar. I know it doesn't look the same as what I showed you before in that nitro slide, but this is areolar, this is dense irregular. When we learn about skin, we just have to know this. Keratinized stratified squamous, areolar, dense irregular. And then even deep to that, Uh, deep to that, we should find fat. I can't see any. These are glands, though. This is a uh, stratified cuboidal. This is fat. This is fat's been removed on the slide. It would be deep, deeper to the dense irregular. I don't see any. But you can see the glands here. See all these darker groupings of cells? Epithelium is typically at the top. But you go really deep and you can see special epithelial cells, these are glands. Yeah. Can you show us like the, the clusters of mucus and cells? <laughs> yeah, I can do it. So this is a salivary gland. The question was how can you tell the difference between mucus and serous? Find a good example. Here, a little closer. Right. Okay, so you can see clusters here of very light colored cells. Those are mucus, serous, or these darker clusters. And then, what's the other mucus producing cell called? The bowel cell. Here's the trachea. Here's the trachea. This is pseudostratified ciliated columnar. <coughs> lighter colored cells interspersed. Those are your goblet cells. Yeah. Are the only No. Where do you find goblet cells? You find it in the trachea, and the trachea happens to be pseudostratified ciliated columnar. You find it in the intestines, which happens to be simple columnar. Simply embedded within a columnar. So, respiratory system. Digestive system. Yeah. We'll, we'll go over all that later. Great. We'll get more practice with this. I'm not expecting to be experts at immediately. It's going to take time. But it is important to put the work in. So as you can see, there's all these things look very, very similar. When you start out, just need repetition. Your practical on Monday does not include this. The next one, practical too. Yeah, so what are the practical questions like? Just like how we do these warm ups, it's a lot like that. Or even like the knee quizzes, like I'll like point to something. Make sure you guys get the three things we've done. Is there another question? It's not all multiple choice. It's not, it's majority multiple choice. There's going to be three questions where I'll call you individually and we'll do some. Yeah. <laughs> expect, expect hypotropy. You should know how to use the microscope and focus on something. <laughs> expect microscopy. Eventually, you'll do video. Oh, not this one. This one's just microscopy. I can only do so much of you. That's it. More questions? So, figure out where this goes? <laughs> you get 70 minutes. 70 zero. Uh, it's worth 47 points, but there are 50 questions. So another opportunity for extra credit. Sorry, I can't, I can't hear the question. It's out loud. Yeah, so for the practical, how does it work? There are going to be stations set up. If you've ever had a practical before, maybe you've had a time station. I'm not doing it like that. 
You can go to whatever station you want, no hovering. If you need to wait, then you wait. And so we'll have like designated way to I mean, I just don't want to. Cool? All right. Last part of class. This is going to be fun. So, have you all seen, uh, like, what do you call it? I've seen on TV ads. They pitch something. Like, like you see that scene on TV, I where like, they're, they're showing a person messing something up, and they're just wish they had a solution to it, and they provide the solution. Yeah, super dramatic, and they show all the things that this thing can do. And they make it, yeah, they have a, a little disclaimer saying these are the things that it can't do, or these are the things you need to be careful with. Like the sham wow. Like sham wow. Shout out, that's <laughs> right. Or like, like a meditation. Oh, yeah, yeah, these are all the things that does. <laughs> All these epithelial tissues that you've now learned about, <laughs> tissues that you've now learned about, they're, they're all specialized for something. They all solve a problem within our bodies. What I would like you to do in your groups is to come up with an ad. So I literally want you to write a script of an ad. One to two minute long script. It should not go too long. I just want you to be to the point about what your problem is, what the thing you're trying to solve and how your product, epithelial tissue, will solve that problem. And I do want you to present this from the class. You can read the script. <laughs> you can read, it's fine, I just want you to verbally do it. So when we're working on the group groups, I will assign you, I will assign you uh, a tissue. Yeah. I want you to work on your scripts. I want your scripts to be tight because I want to, I'm going to compile it and give it, to, give it to everyone when you're all done. Um, so you can save me a huge amount of time by typing. If you need a computer, we have computers here. So, yeah, no excuse here. I want you to see how far you can get done in the next 20, 30 minutes. So I'll check in with you after that time. Question? Yeah. Do I have an example? Uh, if you go on the, uh, if you go on Instagram, there's, don't look at my If you go on Instagram, there, and then if you just want general ones, there are some examples here. Yeah, that type of thing. Um, yeah, they can look there for some examples. Again, one to two minutes long. Be very concise. Everyone should participate, so everyone should have lines, like meaningful lines, where you're talking about a problem or what your thing does or whatever. Get creative, as long as it's you know fairly, um, what's the word? Not too raunchy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know that. And as, uh, and, and if you cover the material, that's what I care about. You're using technical language, you're talking about the structure and function of these epithelial tissues. That, that's, that's what I want. So, okay, there are eight groups. Your simple squamous. Okay. Middle group, your simple cuboidal. Sorry. The back is simple columnar. Back group, simple columnar. Up here, student stratified cross out solutions. Student stratified columnar. Student stratified columnar. Non-keratinized stratified squamous, keratinized stratified squamous, middle group your stratified cuboidal, back group I'm going to make it transitional. Your transition. Everyone know their groups? Cool. Yeah. If you have questions right here, we'll have, we'll help you out. If you want to check your script as you go. Let us know, but again, I want them typed so that you can you can upload it and I can share it with the rest of the class. I just need one type copy. You don't, yeah, just one type copy that you can send as a group. Put your names on it so I know who's in your group, and then we'll go from there. Cool. Cool.